We are still working on the Christian discipline. Somebody say Christian disciplines. And today we are working on a discipline called worship. Christian discipline called worship. That's why I requested uh, my friends, my good friends, the band to be here because every lesson has a practical. And therefore today get yourself ready to learn and to do uh, some practicals to worship. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Ah, when we talk about the Christian disciplines, first before I move into worship, maybe somebody is asking, why are we doing this Christian discipline? Why are we working on these Christian disciplines? These are things that we've had over and over and over again. Sinukweli, we've heard about prayer, we've heard about work, we've heard about uh, very many things. And the question is, why do we, uh, why are we working on these Christian disciplines? And the Bible says the function of these di Christian disciplines, they help us to know God more. They help us to understand God in a, in a better way. Buona sphere sana. And the Bible says that they that know their God, I mean Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32, if you could give it unto us, Daniel chapter number 11 and verse number 32. We read it together. One, two, three. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall what? Uh, if your neighbor is not reading, and we read it together. Okay, let us do it. One, two, three. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall do what? Corrupt with flattery. But the people who? But the people who know their God shall what? Be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. Therefore, we are working on Christians' discipline like worship. We are working on prayer. We've worked on the word. We have worked on evangelism, on fellowship. The intention is that we may be what? Ah, come on, talk to me. That we may be what? Strong and that we may do what? Exploit. So if you want to be strong in family, if you want to be strong in your finances, if you want to be strong in, this, in, 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 in every dimension of your life, what, are we, what do you need to do? You need to be a practicer or you need to be a person who practices the Christian discipline. Somebody say amen. Therefore, in this season, what is the Lord doing? It is not a coincidence that the pastor sat and they decided this is, the, uh, this is what we'll be learning. It is that God is looking for somebody who he shall deposit their strength in them. Uh, do we have somebody in the house? God is looking for somebody who has been desiring to do what? Exploit. Somebody who has been desiring to harness, to get the strength of God. And he's saying in this season, I am ready to deposit my strength in you. Somebody say amen. Ah, Gonga Jirani won't be a neighbor. Are you ready to do exploit? Exploit. I look for another neighbor who are in this service and ask them, neighbor, are you ready to be strong? Therefore, that for us to do exploits and ask for us to be what? To be strong, we need to be what? People who practice the Christian discipline. Somebody say amen. And I am telling you this, even in life, people will not tell you what God they know. You see, the Bible says that they that know their God, it has not specified, it is not closed. Uh, the Muslims know their God and they practice their disciplines. The Buddhists know their God, but it is so unfortunate that for us we take our God casually. Ah, it is so unfortunate that today I'm very spiritual. I shall wake up at 3 a.m. and do what? And pray. It is so unfortunate that for us we, we, we wake up in the morning and, and at times we feel like we are not coming to church and we decide that we are not coming to church. So, what are you trading? You're trading your strength and your threading the potential that is in you through God to do exploits. Uh, somebody say amen. Therefore, every morning when you wake up and you do not practice these Christian disciplines, forget about your strength. Forget about doing exploits. Whether it is in business, whether it is in family, whether it is in every sphere of your life, forget about it. So if it is, and, and we, we can do a simple, a simple formula that you plus the Christian disciplines is equals to knowing your God and is equals to strength and is equals to what? Exploits. Ah. Uh, neighbor. I hope you have gotten that. Therefore, when we are talking about fellowship, when we are talking about worship, when we are talking about evangelism, when we are talking about everything that we've learned, this is for us to gain the ability and the grace to be strong and to do exploits. So are you with me? So have you gotten the objective of us learning this? Therefore, tell your neighbor, neighbor. After this season, I am going to do exploits for God. Look for a believing neighbor who look like they are serious about it and tell them, neighbor, when you see me strong, it is because of this season. The Lord is taking us to a higher level by depositing his strength and his grace upon us. Somebody say amen. 
Let us work now on worship. Worship. I know some of us we hear that topic and we think inya watu wa ibada, inya worship leaders, but inyako. I look for somebody and tell them inyako. E, this this is a Christian discipline that all of us ought to practice. And today we will be looking at what is worship. What is worship? We'll be looking at the correlation between worship and singing and music. The correlation between worship and music. We'll also look at the attitude of worship. We will look at the attitude of worship. We will look at the posture of worship. We look at the posture of worship and we look at the impact of worship. Are you with me? So we look at what is worship. We look at what is the relationship between worship and singing or worship and music. We will look at the posture of worship. We look at the attitude of worship. And we look like at what? The impact of worship. Ah, turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you look like an A student. Kwa hivyo kutoka hapa at least tusitoke bila content tutoke unajua kitu about worship. Kwa hizo vitu zote utoke na kitu ngapi? Moja ama mambo mangapi? Matatu. Bwana siwe sana. Utoke na either moja ama matatu. Aha, what is worship? Worship. What is worship and it started on worship. What is worship? Worship is derived from the old English language or we can also look at the Greek or the Hebrew but we'll not go to that the, under- the purpose is for us to understand worship means to honor to show honor to an object to show honor to an object or to show worthiness to someone to show honor to an object or something or someone or to show worthiness to someone the focus on worship is to a person to the person who uh, a particular the, to the character of a particular person so when we are talking about worship we are talking about the worthiness of someone the, to show honor to someone who this person is bonus fair sana therefore when we talk about worship contrary to praise when we are talking about praise we look at what this person has done to you. But when we are discussing about worship, our focus is on the person, the nature of this person. For example, when we are worshiping God, we focus on who he is. He is holy. He is righteous. He is great. Blessed be the name of Jesus. He is Rafa. We look, we look at who the person is. They might not have done what you expect them to do, but you focus on their nature. Somebody say amen. Therefore, turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, when we are talking about worship, we focus on the person. Somebody say amen. When we are talking about praise, we focus on what the person has done. Therefore, we get an understanding. When we are worshiping God, we look at his holiness. We look at his character. We look at his nature. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. We are building on it and it is going to get better. Somebody say better. Number two, we are looking at the correlation between worship and music. Worship and music. What is the relationship? Because some of us ask, can't we just worship without singing? Some of us think that we, we sing in church just for, you know, fulfilling the commandments, the church program. I mean, Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 16. Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 16. If you could give it unto us, we read it together. Let us read it together. One, two, three. Let the message about in what? All do what? Fulfill your and do what? And teach each other with all wisdom that he gives. Aha. Uh-huh. Sing psalms and what? And hymns and what? And spiritual songs to Aha, uh-huh. with what? Thankful heart. I want to say this to you, that singing has a way of focusing our hearts, our minds, and even our senses entirely on one person. Music has a way of focusing our hearts, our minds, and even our senses in one person. And this is very biblical. Or even this is something that we can all relate. Buona sfe sana. We, we remember, I, I know most of you attended the love concert. Were we there at the love concert of Pastor Harriet and Pastor Moshigadi? Were we there? Ah, uh, me nilikuona. Unaza kuwa huku niyona, lakini nilikuona. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, mbona unakaa kaha hukua. <laughs> Buona sfe sana. And one of the moments that really stood out for me, it is when Pastor Joe and Pastor Harriet were singing. Were we there? Uh, were we there? And some of you, I could see you cry. You know, that, that kind of music would make you even come out there to nakumuka my ex wako water. It has focus. It makes us just think about, you know, one person or, 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 or something. It focuses our minds, our objects. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, <laughs> music has a way of focusing our what? Our senses to one thing. Buona sfe sana. And therefore, when I saw you, for example, in that love concert, <laughs> Buona sfe sana, I could see the emotion. I could 
could see how people were reacting to the music. And this is the same way that it is even in, the, in, in, in our Christian life, that music as it is being played, we realize that the Bible says that the 24 elders in heaven and the seven creatures are in heaven doing what? Singing what? Holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty and worthy, worthy. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Therefore, we sing or we, we, we get to uh, connect worship and music so that our senses, so that our hearts, so that our minds can be focused to one person. You can agree with me, you can pray thinking about other things. You just think of there is someone who I have not paid their debt. But we can all agree that when we are singing, we think about that song. Am I right about it? When you are singing, we are focused towards one thing. And the Bible says, let the message of Christ be translated through what? Songs and through what? Hymns. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, when we sing in church, it is not about passing time. It is not about Ibada. Uh, therefore, what the praise and worship does, we are just midwives. We are just midwives. We just help you to connect with the Father. We bring the song aspect so that your heart, your mind, and your body, they focus on one thing. Like in Isasa, they are called the Rock of Ages. They are difficult people. Ah, they give us a difficult time. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, I hope it is not you. And we move to the, that thing, the posture of worship. Somebody say posture. When you're talking about posture, we are talking about the position of your body. Somebody say amen. You know, some of us stand like those gates. So you stand like a gate until you hear the worship leader saying, lift up your heads, all you gates. And be we are not talking about those gates. We are talking about some of you. When you're not doing anything, you're standing like a gate. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, may the Lord deliver you. Ah, somebody say amen. That you shall not be an everlasting door. You shall not be a gate. You shall be a what? A worshiper. Ah, somebody say amen. You know, with the dynamics of leading worship, and I... It's just a coincidence that I'm also a worship leader and I am preaching about this. From here, you see all kinds of postures. Oh, they are just here and we are praying, Father, may you open the eyes of their understanding that they may see the word, the light. Somebody say amen. Because of the nature of what worship leading entails, for example, we need to coordinate with the band. We need to, Pastor Beatrice is on us, on time and that kind of a thing. So, tunafungama machomoje ingine inangalia. And we normally see you. Talk to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, tunakuonanga. What are you checking? How you behave during, during worship? You stand like, eh? Like uh, you make it difficult for the worship leader. I pray that in the name of Jesus, even as we look at the postures, we shall be delivered. Somebody say amen. Therefore, number one posture when you are worshiping God, aha, we do what? We bow down. Somebody say bow down. We do what? We bow down. I'm in Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 7. Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 7. My time is really going. Psalms chapter number 5 and verse number 7. We read it together. One, two, three. Uh -huh. Yes. Do, do you have the NIV version? The NIV The NIV. Let us read it together. One, two, three. But I, your great love can come to your house in what in and what do i do towards the what ah look at your neighbor and ask them do you bow <laughs> do you bow during worship because the bible says that we come to revere and what do we do we bow therefore the posture of worship entails bowing down somebody say amen lakini wengine watu na mwingine ame bow down sema huyu ni mspiri sana huyu anajifanya huyu anachifa no it is the understanding that when i am coming to honor when i am coming to talk about someone that i really revere what do i do i bow number two posture of worship it is uh kneeling down somebody say kneeling down I am in Psalms chapter number 95 and verse number 6. Kneeling down, kneeling down. Psalms chapter number 95 and verse number 6. If you could give it end to us, we'll be glad. Aha. Uh -huh. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let us read. Come. Let us do what? Bow down in what? And do what? Kneel before our, the Lord, our what? Let us read it one more time. One, two, three. Come, let us do what? Let us bow in worship and let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Somebody say posture. So we have said, number one, we need to do what? Number two, we need to do what? 
Come on, talk to me. Number one, we need to do what? Bow down. Number two, we need to do what? To kneel down. Somebody say amen. Therefore, next Sunday, I am praying for you. When you come, may you come delivered. Uh, somebody say amen. Number three posture, as we bring that to a close. Aha. Uh -huh. Number three posture of worship, it is lifting hands. Lifting hands. I am in Psalms chapter number 141. Psalms chapter number 141 and verse number two. If you could give it unto us. Psalms chapter number 141 and verse number two. Aha. Uh -huh. In the NIV version of do. NIV version of do. Aha. Uh -huh. Let us read it together. One, two, three. May my prayer set before you. Aha. Uh -huh. Like incense. Do what? Be a lifting up of my hands and be like the evening sacrifice. If you, if you go and study the culture of the Hebrews and the Jews, the evening sacrifice was worship. They went to the temple to do what? To worship. Somebody say amen. And therefore, may the lifting up of my hands be as an evening sacrifice. Kwa hivyo, number one, posa tumesema ni nini? Number two, posa tumesema ni nini? Uh, come on, talk to, talk, talk to me. Number one, to me, knee, bowing down. Number two, we have said, kneeling down. Number three, we have said, lifting hands. May the Lord deliver you that you shall not stand as a gate in the name of Jesus Christ. That if you come to Shiloh Worship Center, at the time of worship, you shall not be looking at people. You shall not be surfing. Uh, talk to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, may the Lord deliver you. <laughs> That we shall not just be standing as trees. We shall do what? Bow down. We shall be doing what? Kneeling down. And we shall be what? Lifting hands. Somebody say amen. You know, once upon a time, I tried to be a nurse. I tried to be a nurse. And you know, when I was a mom, I was a dad. They used to come to deliver. And I was like, what? I was like, what? I was like, I was like, I was a nurse. I don't have. Oh, my God. Mtoto ni wa. Yeah, and alipata mto. Lakini sasa, when the time to deliver, the time to deliver, na funga migua fungui. Sasa, there are those very arrogant nurses. Fungua ma mtoto akufe, and we beat them. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And that is how you make sometimes the praise and worship feel. That you are the one who needs that miracle. You are the one who needs this God. Somebody say amen. Because by the time Ibada is coming here to lead us, they woke up at 4.30 a.m. And they worshipped and they prayed. They were here for practice. We were there, we did the songs. But we are just midwives. And at times we feel like just coming down there with a whip. Na kuchapa some of you. May the Lord help you that in the name of Jesus, you will have a revelation that we need to bow down, we need to kneel down, and we need to do what? Lift up our hands during worship. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, may the entrance of that word... <laughs> Bring light and understanding. Look for another neighbor who looks like they have gotten it and tell them, neighbor, make the entrance of that word. Bring light and understanding. Somebody say amen. We are looking at the attitude of worship. The attitude of worship. Sasa tumibakisha tumo. Kwa hivyo kama hujashika kitu, hafadhali uwanze kujikaza to catch up with me. The attitude of worship. And I will say to you, the child of God behind our worship should be an attitude of surrender. Behind our worship should be an attitude of surrender. Behind our worship should be an attitude of surrender. Because when we, are, when we come to worship, when we think about the worthiness of God, it is all about him. Somebody say amen. The attitude of surrender. I came to say to you, child of God, that you cannot hide your heart from God. You cannot, you can hide it from us. You can, you can hide it from everyone. But when it comes to worship, God sees your heart. And therefore, when you come to, to worship, the attitude of worship is surrender. Somebody say amen. We are in Psalms chapter number nine, one nine, 139 and verse number 1. Psalms chapter number 139 and verse number 1. And the Bible says that such my heart. Oh God, such my heart. This is the song of the psalmist. And he says, that such my heart, oh God. Uh -huh. Let us read it together in the NIV for the director of music of David. Uh -huh. A psalm says, you have done what? Searched my heart, Lord. You do what? And you know me. I have verse number uh, two. The Bible says, you know when I sit and you know when I stand. You perceive what? My thoughts. Verse number three. The Bible says, you discern my doing what? Going out. And you do what? My lying down. You are what? Familiar with all of my ways. Now, verse number four. The Bible says, uh -huh, before a word is on my 
You, Lord, do what? Know it completely. Verse number five, the Bible says, Verse number five, you hear me in, behind, and before. You lay your hands upon me. Verse number six, we are going to verse number seven. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Uh -huh. Too lofty for me to do what? Attain. Verse number seven, where can I go from your spirit? Let us read that to, uh, one more time. Where? <laughs> so when you come to worship, the attitude of worship is surrender. That's why we sing, mm, it's all about you. It's all about you. Come on, everybody. Oh, it's all about you, G. Oh, Jesus, it's all about you. Come on, lift it up. It's all about you. It's all about We say, Lord, it's all about you. It's all about you. And I'm coming back, I'm coming back to Harold. And it's all about you. This is the attitude of my it's all about you, Lord. One more time. Worship is surrender. Somebody say amen. Lift up your hand and pray, Lord, may you give me the right attitude. When I come to worship, Lord, may you grant me the right attitude. Look, somebody open up your mouth and cry to Jesus for one minute. Father, may I come to an, with an attitude of surrender. Oh, it's all about you. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and pray. Father, when I come to you, I am not coming pretending. I am not coming uh, hiding the things that are in me. For you know it, oh Lord. You know my sitting down. You know my standing up. You know my going out. You know my lying down and Father, it's all about you. Oh, it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we look at the final part of it, the impact of worship. The impact of worship as we bring this to a close in the next few minutes. The impact of worship. Number one, worship is the pathway to kingship. Worship is the pathway to kingship. Worship is the pathway to kingship. I am in Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 5. Luke chapter number 4 and verse number 5. Worship is the pathway to kingship. Aha, let us read together. One, two, three. Let us read together. One, two, three. The devil did what? Led him up to a high mountain and did what? Showed him in a what? In an, come on, let us read together. One, two, three. The devil led him to a high place. This is Jesus. This is when he was in the wilderness after baptism. And the spirit of the living God led him to the wilderness. And this is one of the temptations. Uh -huh. And in an instant, all the kingdoms, and did what? In an instant, all the kingdoms of the world. Uh -huh. We continue. Verse number six. Uh -huh. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor it has been given to me and I can give him to I want this you remember this came after the fall of Adam the kingdom of or the kingdoms of the earth became the splendor of the evil one I have verse number seven and what why what, what how can I give you these kingdoms if you do what uh -huh, it will all be somebody say amen Therefore, the, the enemy comes, the devil comes to Jesus and says, all the kingdoms, all the principalities of this world, they have been given unto me. And I give him, I give to whoever I do what I want. But there is just one principle of the, receiving these kingdoms. What? Worship. And then something happened after Jesus was around and he died. I mean, Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. After Jesus died and rose for us, there was a transfer. Somebody say a transfer. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 18. There was a transfer that the kingdoms of this world were given to him. Uh, let us read together that 
Then Jesus came to them and did what? And said, ah, let us read together. One, two, three. Then Jesus came to them and did what? And said, all authority in what? In heaven and on earth has been what? Been given to. And he says, like Satan did, I will give him to whoever what? I want. Uh, unless, uh, if you do what? If you worship. And then in Daniel, there was a prophecy that was done in Daniel chapter number 27, verse number 27. Daniel chapter number 7 and verse number 27. We want to join these three scriptures. Uh -huh. One, two, three. The Bible says, then the sovereign power and the what? The greatness of all the uh -huh. Let's read together. One, two, three. Then the sovereignty, the power, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the heaven will do what? Be handed of, over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdoms uh -huh, will be established with an everlasting kingdom. And all rulers will do what? Worship and do what? Obey him. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Therefore, Jesus came and took the kingdoms from the enemy. And now he has the kingdoms. And he's saying to you, child of God, I want you to give you these kingdoms and these powers and this authority. But on one thing, if you worship, worship is the pathway to kingship. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, if you worship, if you want these thrones, if you want to be a ruler, what is the pathway to kingship? Worship. Somebody say amen. And even we see this in the dark world. People are not looking for anything. The enemy is not looking for anything. You Illuminati people are not there. The enemy is not there to look for anything. It's just there for their worship. Somebody say amen. And great is our God and greatly to be praised. How much more will he give it to us if we worship? Somebody say amen. And therefore when you look in the scripture, any worshiper, any true worshiper was a ruler. Ah. Uh, Somebody say amen. When we look at the life of David, he was a ruler. He was a king. He was a man of influence. He was a great man. It is not for his sacrifice. It was not for his prayer. Anybody can pray. But worship is the pathway to kingship. Therefore, if you, do not, if you are not a worshiper, you are trading your kingship. Uh, if you are not a worshiper, forget about being a king. Forget about being a great something in this planet. You wait to go to heaven. It is okay. Blessed be God. We will find you there. But as for me, I have made up my decision that I want to be a king. And therefore, I shall be a worshiper. Somebody say, I shall be a worshiper. Uh, if do I have kings in the house, say, I shall be a worshiper. Because worship is the pathway to kingship. Somebody say amen. Number two, worship allows us. Or worship allows us to encounter God's power and might. I have six minutes. Worship allows us to encounter God's power and might. I mean, Mark chapter number 5, verse number 6 to 8. Quickly, if you could give it to us, we have one point left and we are done. Mark, Mark chapter number uh, 5. Uh -huh. Now, this is the story of that man who was in the mountains, the Garasarin, the Ga Garasin, whatever he is called. He used to cut himself and he was just a demon possessed man. He was just there in the mountains and now Jesus comes and they meet. And he sees him from afar. Let us read together. And he saw Jesus. This is that man, possessed man, eh? From where? Garasin, eh? Sawa, sawa, eh? We were taught of Bible study. I hope you're doing your Bible study. These things are easier when you do your Bible study. Uh -huh. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and did what? And worshipped him. Uh -huh. Then what, he, uh, what happened? And he cried out with a loud voice. What have you to do with Jesus? Uh -huh. Son, uh huh. I implore you by God that you do not torment. Then what happened? Jesus did not have a, a discussion. Verse number eight. The Bible says, For he said to him, Come out of the man and clean. Let me ask you a question. Did the man tell Jesus to set him free? But immediately he worshipped. Uh, it stirred up Jesus to command that unclean spirit to come out of you. You know what happens when we worship child of God? God comes and looks at you and sees anger in you. He sees bitterness in you. Uh, he sees blindness in you. And he says that in the name of Jesus, may that unclean spirit leave you in the name of... Uh, somebody say amen. When you worship, you stir up God to reveal his power and his might in you. Has uh, somebody gotten there? Not on this side. Let me speak to the ones in this side. Maybe our like when you worship God sees already I am struggling with a generational curse I am struggling with this battle I am I do not have a job and God 
takes that opportunity and expresses his power to you. Somebody say amen. Therefore, worship allows us uh, to encounter God's power. Jesus comes to this man and he says, because you have worshipped, I command that unclean spirit. I command those demons. I command blindness. I command bitterness. I command hatred in the name of Jesus. Get out in the name of Jesus. And I come in the same multitude this morning to command every unclean spirit under the sound of my voice uh, because you are a worshiper. They are getting out. Uh, anger is getting out. Uh, bitterness is getting out. Uh, pain is getting out. Uh, depression is getting out. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, you are here to encounter the power and the might of God. There was no discussion. The blind Matthias says, Jesus, come and heal me. Come and I want to see. The leper said, we want to get whole. But for this blind, this man of Garasin, he just worshipped. And what happened? Automatically, ah, the power and the might of God was expressed to him. Somebody say amen. Konga jirari muambia neighbor. Umepata yo kweli. Look for another neighbor and tell them, neighbor, you look like an A student of the Bible. Have you received that? That when you come to worship, you just come and open up your heart. God knows I am struggling with this. I have these uh, struggles. But in the name of Jesus, you're getting out of this place free. Somebody say amen. And to the last point, worship allows us to experience, to encounter God's mercy. Worship allows us to encounter God's mercy. Worship allows us, allows, not arouse, allows us to encounter God's grace and mercy. I'm in Job chapter number 1 and verse number 20. I will tell you, child of God, we need God's mercy. We need God's grace. This is a story of Job when uh, the news about losing his son, losing his flocks, losing everything that he had came to him. Your sons are dead. You've lost everything that you had. But look at the response of Job. At this, Job got up and tore his what? Robes. Let us read it together. At this, Job got up and did what? And tore his robes. And did what? Shaved his head. And did what? Then he fell on the ground and worshipped. I'll tell you, child of God, the hard times will come. There are times that we receive bad reports. Kuna zile seasons za aki God wa. Simunajua yu season? Aki God wa. Mwena zile mbi msize nye mtu asema, you see, ati, this is how my prayer looks like. Asema God alafu tumachozi, tuna, tuna kwa karatasi. You have seen those memes. There are those seasons and they will come to you. But I say to you, when the time of adversity comes, worship should always be your well of strength. When the time of adversity comes, and it comes to everyone, a pastor, a bishop, anyone and at times it's not because you have seen job had not seen by the time of adversity came when the time of adversity comes worship should always be your well of strength somebody say amen i was listening to i was listening to uh, reverend kathy and she was just saying in one of the service after bishop left she didn't she didn't know what she would have done if she was not a worshiper. I am telling you the truth. Let us be real children of God. There are times you will try to pray and you will not even have words to pray. There, is, there are times you will try to read that word and even you cannot see anything in that word. There are times you will not have the patience to go and evangelize or to, to do all the Christian disciplines. But in those days of adversity, you just lift up your voice and worship because worship is the well of strength. Somebody say amen. You sing like songs like from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea your name is to be Adonai the time of the sunset from the rising from the when you receive a letter that you've lost your job. Some of us have received bad news like losing a parent or a mother or a father. You may receive bad news concerning your, your, your health and concerning every sphere of your life and you're not able to pray. That is the same and the time 
to lift up your voice and just worship. Somebody say amen. You sing songs. Oh, Adonai, from the rise, you say, from the rise, to the setting, to the setting, your name. 